Hello, the internet. I'm Dr. Peter Allen. In my day job, I'm a bioanalytical chemist, and on the weekends, I make these little videos. Uh, today, I want to address a sort of broad and dangerous question, which is, why trust science? Now, a few weeks ago, I made a video about Hydra. That's the little freshwater animals, not uh, not the mythical beast or the Marvel villains. And, and I got people up in my comments talking about a conspiracy theory I I'd never heard of. According to this theory, they are adding Hydra to the vaccines, along with nano chips and nano onions. Sounds like a dip. Hey, Mr. Tardigrade, did you like that nano onion dip? Anyway, uh, this is really pretty silly. Um, Hydra are cool, but they're just little animals. I mean, they're neat little animals. They don't age, but they're not they're really terribly robust. They, they won't fit it through a syringe needle, and if you tried to push them through, they'd just shred. And they live in cool, fresh water, and in other environments, they do die. They certainly don't live well in hot, salty flesh with an immune system attacking them. Like, look, here's a comparison. It would be like claiming that they are putting weasels in gasoline tankers. And I might reply, wait a minute, weasels wouldn't fit through the pump nozzle, and they wouldn't do anything but drown in the gasoline anyway. I guess they might clog your fuel line or get weasel bits in your injectors, but it's not going to do anything interesting. And who would be finding and identifying these weasels anyway? Do we trust them? It wouldn't be hard to spot. Everyone who pumps gas would be having problems. We should be seeing lots of this. And surely nobody would be able to keep weasel production and distribution a secret for long. This kind of reasoning does not help. The ensuing conversation is not fruitful. I'm not going to reason a person out of an idea they didn't read themselves into. And even making this video might be alienating people instead of drawing them in. And the single most common trait among conspiracy theorists is loneliness. And that's just sad. So I went through a period in my life when I got really into conspiracy science fiction. I read the Illuminatus trilogy and the Schrodinger's Cat trilogy by Robert Anton Wilson. I even became Pope of the Church of Subgenius. Look, here's my official Pope card right here. It was a lonely time in my life, and these books really resonated. These days, I think there are marketing funnels just waiting for people who are in that state of mind, the way ant lions wait for ants. So I started re reading about what the best practices are for talking with conspiracy believers and science deniers. And I was really inspired by this talk by Naomi Oreskes called Why Trust Science? If you're interested in this sort of thing, I recommend you watch her video. I'm not going to be able to do a better job. She wrote a book about that topic. It was published just before the COVID-19 pandemic. And it's especially relevant now. Thanks to all the anti-science talk on social media, we really need to learn about this. She asks a simple but important question. Why trust science? And more practically, why should people trust scientists? Like, scientist and bomber are the only two careers that have the common antecedent mad. And as a scientist on YouTube, the subtext of why should you trust scientists is why should you trust me? And that's uncomfortable. It seems like I'm saying, trust me. Which inspires rather the opposite. Uh, but it's not important for somebody who hears me talk about science to trust me specifically. It's more important to trust the scientific enterprise in general. Now, Dr. Oreskes ultimately concludes that we should trust scientific institutions and by extension, the people who speak for those institutions. That might be called a heuristic. What's a heuristic? For some science and math problems, a heuristic is a technique to tell if a solution is good or not. It gives an approximate solution when circumstances don't allow a full one. For example, if I want to tell if some leftovers are still okay, I could use the quick sniff heuristic instead of running a full bacterial culture or a PCR test. This is not perfect, it's just an approximation. And as a practical matter, a trusted institution heuristic does make sense. If I want to know something about an unfamiliar field, I try to learn from a respected expert. I can tell if someone is a respected expert if they are appointed by a respected institution. We have a finite relationship on this mortal coil. We have to start somewhere, and that's usually reliable. If we wish to see far, we should stand on the shoulders of giants. Like when the head of the National Institute for Allergy and Infectious Disease talks about how a virus spreads, I trust him. He needed a lot of recognized expertise to get that position. 
And if he messes up, there's accountability. Trusting the NIAID and its officials is a good heuristic, a shorthand rule when the full solution, like becoming a virologist, isn't practical. But philosophically, this bothers me. If that's a heuristic, what's the full solution? What if someone speaking for a respected institution says something that sounds like it could be wrong? You will get chlamydia and die. How do we check on them? To whom do we go when things seem confusing and we're not sure what's true? If you ask God himself, you know. Nope, that's not going to work for me, Elder Kevin. Let's put it another way. If your doctor says you have a bacterial infection, you might ask, well, how do you know, doc? And she might say, well, we ran a culture test and that shows what kind of bacteria are infecting you. And you might say, well, how do you know that the test works? And she would reply, well, the bi bacteriologist taught her in, in med school. The test was reliable. But how did the microbiologists know? And we could keep pushing it back to the head microbiologist, the platonic ideal of microbiologists, Louis Pasteur Pipette. No, no, microbiologists ran the experiments and the controls. Every new generation of microbiologists and young med students run them again. The experiments confirm that knowledge. Experiment is the final authority. Our careful observation interaction with the actual physical world. There seem to be a lot of vocal people on the internet who fundamentally disagree with this basic premise. Truth is something in an old book, or a comfortable tradition, or an unquestioned value, or an internet video that just feels true. Science is our understanding based on the past and current observations of the physical world. These organizations that disseminate it are only the messengers. We don't have to trust them because they're good or infallible. We trust them because they're performing the experiments. They're keeping each other accountable to that basic principle. And it's an open community. Anyone with the desire and ability can find a place. Now, I wish we funded science better, and art and music for that matter, so that more people could be a part of it directly. But the science, the observable, verifiable facts, are that vaccines are safe and effective and don't contain weird organisms. That's backed up by experiments, clinical trials, safety checks, and quality control, and ongoing observations. So why trust science? You know, because it's always accountable to reality. Now, the moral truth, the should, is that if we care about our fellow humans and are physically able, we should get vaccinated. The science can't resolve the basic political question. Do we care about our fellow humans or not? Do you think I ended this on a good note? I, th I think so. I mean, you're putting out a positive message. You're not saying, get vaccinated, you assholes. You know, if you were doing that, yeah, you know, that, that would be, be different. If you were far. really pushing it or selling it or sounding I... preachy, then that would be a problem. But you're not. It's a, just a bit of advice and poses a question, a, a Do... pertinent question. Do you care about other people? Like, do you know what you're doing? Yeah, and I, I don't know that this was a, a vaccine video. No, no, it but... totally wasn't. That is, That was just an end bit. Yeah, you think that's okay? I think that's fine. So, yeah, all right, oh, yeah, I'm going to leave it then. Let me say my little bit. Thanks for watching, and if you like the kind of thing, tune back in. This has been Peter Allen for The Allen Lab.